Welcome to the EEV Vlog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 11. We haven't had a book review for a while, so I figured it's about time again. So this week, I've chosen the classic, absolute classic, The Art of Electronics by Paul Horowitz and Winfield Hill. Now, when I say classic, I really mean it. Um, this is a book that was published in 1989. This is the second edition. It was published in 1989. Um, and it, it really is considered uh, the industry bible on electronics. It is probably the um, single best reference on practical electronics design you can get, bar none. Now, it's a huge book at over a thousand pages. It's, it's absolutely enormous. And um, it covers everything, really everything you need for practical electronics design. It, it starts from the basics, you know, from Ohm's Law, it goes through components, and it goes through analog electronics, digital electronics, um, circuit implementations, good and bad, and it covers the whole gamut of electronics design. It, it really is quite brilliant. But the best part about it is that it's a practical book. Uh, a lot of books out there that you'll uh, be given or you'll be recommended as part of your uh, engineering course, they're, they're just theoretical crap, really. So unless you want to be a, a you know, go on and become a lecturer, um, those books are useless to you because electronics, real electronics in the industry is about practicality. Now, while there is lots of theory in here, it's, it's not mathematical. It's, it's all practical theory, and any math in here is really just simple, practical stuff that you need to do the job. Now, I've got to say that some of the things in here are a bit dated, uh, just due to the sheer age of it. But, um, you know, 99% of it is still relevant, and it's an excellent book. Now, I don't care if you're a hobbyist, you're an engineer, a student, or you've been in the industry for 20 years like me. This is a book you should have on your reference shelf. If you don't, then you're not serious about electronics. Really, get a copy of it. The Art of Electronics. Now, uh, Wynne Hill has um, been talking about a third edition for many years now. He's actually a regular on the uh, news groups and things. And, and, you know, people have been asking, eagerly awaiting, when's the third edition coming out? And, you know, the, the answer is next year. It's always next year. But uh, I've heard that, you know, it's, it's not too far off release now. So look out for the third edition. But uh, Wynn has said that really it won't, um, it won't be a replacement for this one. It'll, it'll be cover mostly new material or it'll be a supplement to this one. So really you should get edition two and hang on to it. Now I thought I'd talk about product design. Not just any product design, but I thought I'd give you an example. This one, my scientific calculator watch. It's my micro watch. Now you've probably seen this before. It's a project I came up with a year or two back and I thought I'd tell you about how I developed it. Now, step one with developing a product like this is you've got to have the idea. The idea was easy. It's, you know, there hasn't been a scientific calculator watch sold in 20 years. And I wanted one, so I thought I'd design my own. It's as simple as that. Step number two is to determine how feasible your project is. Now, uh, you know, I'm just a, you know, a guy in a workshop. I don't have millions of dollars to actually design a really, you know, good looking, uh, you know, custom professional watch. And um, I certainly wish I did, but I don't. So how feasible is it, I thought, is it to design your own watch, especially a calculator watch? Now the art of electronics, no pun intended, is to be able to design and build practical stuff out of components you can actually get. Now it's easy to dream about having a custom LCD display, a custom keypad, a custom case, a custom watch band attachment, a custom bits and bobs and everything else. But that costs a lot of money to develop stuff like that. So I decided to see what was possible using stuff I could get off the shelf parts. 
Now in a practical design like this, you need a really a seed that allows you to, uh, a key part that allows you to uh, build the design around that. And in this case, I've mentioned this before, it was the tiny little um, uh, 53 by 20 millimeter LCD display. And this is what I built the watch around. If I didn't find this, it would have been absolutely no go. So I sat this on my wrist and I went, well, okay, it's, you know, it's roughly the right size. It's, you know, it's, it's small enough. So how can I turn this into this? Now, projects can be lumped into two basic categories. I don't like to do this, but I will for this um, talk anyway, is that some projects are uh, software focused. They're soft, soft design and soft focused. And that means that you spend most of your time working on the software, working on the, um, you know, the user interface or, you know, some other um, soft design of the product. In this case, with the microwatch, it's not. This is a hardware focused design where all of the decisions, all of the key decisions that go into making or breaking this product are hardware based. It's got nothing to do with software. I can, you know, hook an LCD onto a microcontroller with a keypad. I can do that in a couple of hours and have a, you know, have a calculator running. That's easy. But how do you actually design and build something that can fit practically on your wrist? It's all hardware based. Now the key trade-offs in a design like a watch is uh, size. Everything's driven by size. Now, you know, this is fairly big, this LCD. So, you know, and we've got to have a case for this watch. So how can we fit this into some sort of case that, fit, that fits on your wrist? Now the answer, as it turns out, is that it's very, very difficult to fit something like this into a box that fits on your wrist. It's, you know, it, it just becomes too big and really you need a totally custom case. Now, I'm not a mechanical, I'm not a 3D mechanical engineer, so I don't know how to design cases in AutoCAD and stuff like that. That's not really my area. So I was limited to what cases I could get off the shelf and I looked around and, and you know, there really wasn't too much available. So I got the idea of, well, okay, what can I do without a case? So then that became my driving factor behind the entire design. Not only to use all off the shelf parts, but to see what I could produce and how good a watch I could produce without using a case. Now that's, you know, I don't think uh, that's, that's been done before. One of the key drivers that went into the design was how do I mount the watch band? onto a board. You know, you, you have to have a PCB to mount your components on and because there's no case, there's, there's really uh, no other thing to anchor the watch band onto. So I got the idea to mount the watch band onto the PCB. And what I did is actually uh, came up with the idea of using little uh, turrets, little PCB turrets, soldered or glued onto the board and then use a standard watch pin and attach the um, actually attach the watch band straight to the board. And, you know, a few trials, it proved to be, you know, quite a reasonable concept. Okay, so my design now has an LCD, it's got a PCB, and it's got a watch band attachment. Okay, what's next? The keypad. Now, my first thought for the keypad was obviously to use uh, surface mount key switches. Because, uh, you know, on a single PCB like this, if you've got, you know, 25 keys on it, um, that takes up a lot of your board area. And this is an early prototype and it actually had, um, you know, solder mount, um, surface mount pads on it. Now, that works great until you get into the practicalities of actually assembling it. 